Hello guys, what you're about to watch is one lesson from my upcoming course about Laravel API creation and I'm releasing this video for free for you to check it out and if you want to access full course here's the link on the screen if you're watching that before the course is released that link will tell you to subscribe to newsletter to receive 50% discount for the upcoming course and if you're watching this when the course is released then that link will take you directly to the course so you're late for the discount but the price is still totally affordable. So enjoy watching this video about Sanctum and API tokens. In this video we will take a look at Laravel API authentication specifically with Laravel Sanctum and API tokens. To understand how it is used, in what situation, you should read the documentation. This feature is inspired by GitHub access token, so every user of your system would have personal access token and then would make API calls passing that token every time. So it's mostly about long-term tokens for access for your features. And if you look at GitHub, here's the example that Taylor was talking about. So on GitHub, you can create personal access token, generate new token, generate new token, give it a name and give it permissions. And then it would generate a long token, which would then be used by calling GitHub API. So to achieve that in Laravel with Sanctum, there are a few things you need to know. After installing Laravel Sanctum, you should run migrations of the Sanctum and it creates a database table personal access tokens, which is empty in our case for now. Somehow in your application, you need to issue the token, create the token for the user. It could be some user panel as in GitHub, it could be some action on login or on register, it could be done automatically, whatever you choose. But how to do that is in user model of the code. Here you need to add has API tokens and use has API tokens. Then in the API routes, you protect the routes that you want with middleware auth sanctum. It's actually the same middleware, whatever sanctum way you use, SPA or API token, it's the same name of middleware. And now if we don't issue any tokens for any users and try to make a postman request, for example, this one, API categories, it would be message authenticated with status code 401, unauthorized. And let's try to issue the token for some of the users. We will do that with Artisan Tinker. Let's find a user in our system. I've seeded a few users just for testing. And then the syntax is user, create token, and some token name like developer access, for example. The name doesn't really matter. And the result of that is plain text token. And that's the one we would need to use with every request. So now if we launch that, I've copied and will paste into Postman. In Postman, one of the tabs is authorization. And you should choose bearer token and add the token here. Paste, and we send the request. And now, as you can see, we have the list of the categories. So the token identified that user and gave the access. And if we try to edit something here in bear token, so put invalid token, it will still show unauthenticated 401. If we take a look at the database, refresh that table. And as you can see, the token is generated and coded and stored in the database. If you want to remove that token for whatever reason, the syntax is user tokens delete that's it return one and then there's no token and if we try to launch with the same token that was correct it's not correct anymore not valid anymore finally with that token you can pass abilities or permissions whatever word you want to use so when creating the token another parameter should be array of permissions and let's store a permission of categories list for example, but not give the permission for category view, category show. And in category controller, let's add those checks for the permissions. So in index we add if and syntax is auth user token can and parameter is the permission name. So in our case it's categories list. So can user access the categories? And we do if not, so if cannot access, we do abort 403 with error message unauthorized. 
And remember that status code 403 is different from 401. 401 means unauthenticated, which means doesn't have a session, not logged in at all. And 403 means logged in, but doesn't have permission for specific action. So one of our actions is categories list, and another action will be categories show. So we copy and paste here, categories show. And let's repeat the same postman request with new bearer token that we have, and see which action succeeds and which doesn't. So categories list with bearer token should be successful, but if we try to load category show, so category with ID 1, that category does exist, as you can see, but if we send with the same token, it returns 403 with an authorized message that we specified. And this part can be done with middleware, you can extract that to some other logic, but in general, use token can to check the permissions of API token by sanctum.